This message has been brought to you freely by Ecclesia Kingdom Movement. To support our ministry and partner with us to increase our impact across the world, reach more people and take advantage of more platforms, we encourage you to consider making a monthly gift of any amount or one-time gift towards the work of the gospel. We'd like to thank you in advance for your support and we value your partnership. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for the power in your word. And we thank you, God, for the cross, for the power in the cross. Father God, today, I lift myself to you, Lord. And Father God, I say that it's, it's not about me. It's not about my, my eloquent words and my wise words. But Father God, I pray that out of what, what I say today, that you would get all the glory, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will penetrate through the hearts, penetrate through the places that even I cannot reach, God. Father God, you know each and every single person sat in front of me today. You know the depths of their hearts, God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will penetrate through the soul in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that your word that is able to transform God is present here today. And Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would get all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Right, today... Um, I would like us to keep our minds very open I, as I speak. Um, I believe that God wants to do something in our hearts and, and in our minds today. And I want us to keep our, our hearts and our mind very open and, and not think, oh, I've heard this before. Or, I, I know this, so it doesn't apply to me. Um, paraventure, God may be speaking to you again. Today I'm going to speak about um, being naked. Um. I was going to say, turn to your neighbor and say, be naked, but that's not really appropriate in the setting we're in, so I'm not going to say that. Everybody keep your clothes on. Um, but yeah, today I'm going to speak about being naked. It started off for me, I say every time I come to preach, I always say that I will never preach something that I'm not living. I will never preach something that's a theory something that I've heard somebody else said, something that I heard this pastor said, but I will only preach what I know and what I've experienced through my journey with God. And it started off for me sometime last week, and I felt God drawing me, and I hadn't felt that way in a very long time. I felt God pulling me somewhere. And it was... It was very strange for me because, like I said, I hadn't felt that in a long time. I, haven't, I hadn't felt that, that deep calling and that deep desire to, to be alone with God. Sometimes life happens, and can I be honest, and, you know, your, your, your cares becomes everything else. Your cares becomes your child, your husband, your job, your this, and you feel like you're getting pulled in so many different directions that you just, you just read your Bible, you pray, and you do the basics just to survive. And I felt God just pulling me somewhere and just taking me to a place that I hadn't been in a long time. And during this time, I felt him stripping me of, of what I thought I knew. I, I felt him just opening up my heart to me and allowing me to see my heart the, the way it was. And I felt naked. I felt like I, I, I couldn't hide anymore. I felt like my heart was, was on a screen and everybody could see it. And that's what I want to speak about today, being naked. If we... Um, I'm just going to give, give a quick definition of what being naked is.
When you check the dictionary to see what being naked is, you see bare, with nothing on, stripped, unclothed, undressed, uncovered, undraped, exposed. In a state of nature, So we see these words that describe a place of being vulnerable, a place of being completely, completely open where you cannot hide. The first time we see naked is in Genesis. So I'm going somewhere today. So if we could please um, stick with me. If we can turn to Genesis 2, 25, please. I'll just give us a few seconds to get there. So in Genesis, it speaks about the story of creation, where God created man and woman. And this was before sin came into the world. They were in a state of perfection. They were in the state of where they had, nothing was wrong. Everything was at equilibrium. Everything was as it should be. Is everybody at Genesis 2.25? Okay. Um, Genesis 2.25. It says, and they were both naked, the man and the woman, and were not ashamed. I'll read that again. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So we see that before sin came into the world, when we were in a state of perfection, God created them naked. So when God does something, He's trying to show us something. He could, have, he could have created them with clothes on. He could have created them, you know, a different way. But he chose to create them naked. And I believe that God was trying to tell us something here. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. If we look at the word, the definition of the word naked, they were exposed. They had nothing on. They were stripped. They were bare. But the Bible says they were not ashamed. So if we think about it, They were in a state where most of us would try and hide. Most of us would try and cover up. They were in a state where it's it's vulnerable to be naked. But they were not ashamed. And let's bear in mind, this is before sin came into the world. This was in a state of perfection. I want us to now turn to Genesis 3, 7. Genesis 3, 7. I'll give us a few seconds to get there. Is everybody there? Genesis 3, chapter 7. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. I'll read that again. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves, fig leaves together and made themselves apron. So between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3, something happened. Sin happened. And sin exposed them to their nakedness. 
And their natural reaction after sin came into the world was to try and cover up their nakedness. To try and hide what they now realized. To try and cover up what wasn't comfortable anymore. As, as human beings, our natural disposition is to try and hide our nakedness. At this point, Adam and Eve had not been taught anything. They hadn't been, the only person they had been, they had been nurtured by was God. But as soon as sin came in, something happened. They tried to hide. There, there's nothing changed. They were naked then and they were naked now, but they, something changed inside of them that made them try and hide what, what was already there, what was already there from the beginning. As human beings, our natural disposition is to try and cover up. It's to try and patch things together. It's to try and make ourselves look better, appear better on the outside. And none of us want to be naked None of us want to be stripped away. None of us want to be bare. None of us want to be vulnerable. None of us want to just want our, want our, 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 our body and our being to be hanging out there. We want to cover it up. But if we look at the beginning... The way it was intended, God wanted us naked. And please don't, P.O. says all the time, people put, put things on YouTube. I'm not talking about anybody being physically naked. So nobody twist my words. I'm talking about a state in our spirit. A state in our minds. None of us want to be naked. But that's the way God intended it. We see here that they try to hide. And even in verse, verse 8, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. They hid themselves amongst the presence of they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. At this point, they have sinned. Did God know? God knew they had sinned, but he still came looking for them. But their natural way of dealing with, with the revelation they just had was to hide. Hide away from God. But if God still came looking for them, even when he knew that they had sinned, he knew that they had fallen short of the glory, but he still came looking for them. But they had hidden themselves away. Today, I want to speak about bearing all before God. Being naked before God. Not trying to patch, his, patch things up in the presence of God. But allowing God to strip the fig leaves that we have put together and used to cover ourselves. Allowing God to strip it away. Most of us have things in our lives or do things in our lives that we think is worth covering up. It might not be, 
be, be sexual sin. I'm not talking, it doesn't have to be um, Ten Commandments sin. Many of us have, this is the, the analogy that God gave me when I was preparing. He gave me the analogy of an elephant in the room. It's like there being an elephant in the room, but we, f- we focus on the mic stand because we don't want to deal with the elephant. We ignore that the elephant is in the room. And we say, no, but this mic stand's broken. Let me fix the mic, mic stand. But wait, there's an elephant in the room that you haven't sorted out, but you're focusing on the mic stand. There's an elephant standing right here that everybody can see. But because we don't want to believe it, because we want to patch things up and make things seem okay, we ignore the elephant and focus on the mic stand. And that's what many of us do as Christians. We have that thing in our life that causes us to be ashamed that causes us to want to hide. But we don't want to be naked before God about it. We don't want to go into the presence of God and feel vulnerable. And feel like, you know what, God, this is me. Yes, I have sinned. Yes, I have fallen short of your glory. But this is me. We don't want to do that. But instead, we ignore the elephant and we want to fix the mic stand. So God, I'm just giving a random example. I'm dealing with fornication. But God, no God, I will ignore that. But instead, I'm going to deal with, oh, I need to read my Bible more. I will ignore my fornication. I will ignore the elephant in the room. I will ignore my jealousy. I will ignore my hatred. I will ignore my greed. But instead, I will focus on trying to be better. I will focus on the on the minors in the room. Instead, God, I'm not gonna deal with the fact that my 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 heart doesn't love people. I'm not gonna deal with that elephant. But God, instead, I'm going to try and hide it. I'm going to cover it up. I don't want to be naked. So I'll say, God bless you, sister. But in my heart, something else is going on. I'll say it is well with you, brother. But in my heart, it's full of wickedness. But I won't deal with that elephant. I'll deal with learning how to fast more. I'll deal with attending more Bible studies. I'll deal with the things that are menial, the things that should flow out of my heart because I love you. I will try and patch patch the outside together. I will try and make the package seem good. I will cover myself with man-made fig fig leaves. Like Adam and Eve, I will take the leaves that I have made, not the one that God has given me, and I'll try and patch myself together so that I don't have to deal with the elephant in the room. I don't have to acknowledge that the elephant is there. Many of us lie to ourselves long enough. I don't know why I'm, why I'm, th- why I'm, I'm picking up jealousy. I'm not saying anybody here is dealing with it here, but it's, it's being laid on my heart strongly. Instead of us to be like, God, yes, I'm jealous. Yes, I'm not happy that I've been waiting for 10 years for my husband and she's only 21 and her husband has already come. Yes, God, I'm angry. Many of us don't want to be naked in front of God. We don't want to bear it all. We don't want to be stripped away. We don't want to deal with the elephants in the room. 
We don't like how it feels. Because it leaves us in a place where we don't. And the, I was thinking about it this, this week. And I was saying, God, why, why do I do that? Why, why don't I deal with my elephants? Why do I deal with the ants? Where the ant can't hurt me, but the elephant can. Why do I want to deal with the little things? Where an where, where ant, if the elephant and the ant is in a room, you can step on the ant and it's dead. But the elephant can attack you. The elephant can kill you. And I was saying, God, why don't I want to deal with it? And I heard God speak to my heart. It's because you don't understand my love for you. It's because you think that I will reject you if I see you the way you really are. Many of us understand God through the lenses of humans. We see God through the lenses of a parent. And parents are great. And parents are wonderful. And yes, their love for us can be unconditional. But at times, we have felt like, oh, but if my mother knew that, if she knew that, she wouldn't love me anymore. So we equate that to God. We think in our hearts, if God saw this, if God saw my wickedness, if God saw me in the state that I am in, he would not love me anymore. He would think less of me. And therefore we try to hide. Not understanding that he can see all anyway. This is our clearest example. God already knew that Adam and Eve had sinned. He knew that they had sinned. He knew that they weren't in a state of perfection, but he still came looking for them. He still came looking for them, even after he knew that they had fallen short of his glory. He kept his appointment with them. I'm sure that there was a specific time that Adam and Eve knew that God used to walk into the garden. And they may have thought in their head that, oh, because, because we have sinned and we have eaten the fruit, God's not going to come today. He's not going to show up today. They must have thought, oh, let's, let's, let's run away now. God's not going to come. But he still came. God wants us. To be naked before him. To bear all before him. God, I'm struggling with lust. Can I be real? I see my brother in church. And my mind has already done so many things. God, yes, I'm a woman, but when I look at another woman, something goes on inside of me. Can I be real? And it's about time we become naked in front of God and stop trying to patch things up. Because when we try to patch things up, it's human-made leaves. One day it's going to break apart. The leaves are not going to last forever. There's only so much things we used to patch ourselves up can last. There's only so much we can put on the facade and come to church and speak in tongues and nothing is going on on the inside. There's only so much you can do that for. Because if the fruit is rotten inside, there comes a time where it's going to show on the outside. There's only so long a rotten apple 
can be rotten just inside. Very soon, the apple will begin to be bruised on the outside. And everybody will begin to see that this apple is not right anymore. That there's something wrong with this apple. The thing is that God wants us to to come to him with the real issues in our lives. Enough of the of the Christian talk. Enough of the Christian activities. Many of us try To cover up what's really going on in our hearts with Christian activities and with church activities. 6.30 a.m. prayer, we're there. Thursday evening service, we're there. Friday threshing floor, we're there. Sunday night of breakthrough, we're there. Deliverance service, we're there. They're called a three-day fast in church. We're there. And we mask what's really going on on the inside with activities because it makes us feel better. Those are the leaves we used to cover up. Those are the leaves we used to hide. If they see me in prayer... They won't know I masturbated last night. If they see me in church on Sunday morning, they won't know that I just came out of a bed of fornication. If they see me lifting up my hands, they won't know that my heart is bitter and jealous against the, the person I'm sitting next to. They won't know. They won't get it. They will think I'm one of them. They will think we're all cool. But we can deceive man. But we can't deceive God. We can deceive man, but we can't deceive God. If we turn to Psalm 51, 6. As I'm speaking, I want us to be thinking of the elephant in our lives. The elephant in the room that's in our lives that we've been ignoring, but instead dealing with the ant and the crocodiles on the floor. Is everybody there? Psalm 51 verse 6. Just wait a few more seconds for everybody. Is everybody there? Psalm 51 verse 6. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make known wisdom. Focusing on the first part. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. God desires truth. In the inward parts. Not on the outside. Not on the places people can see. Because it's, 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 it's easy to make something appear as truth. It's easy to, 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 not, make, to not allow people to know that you're, trying to, you're, you're, you're thinking about suicide. It's easy to to put the makeup on. It's easy to wear that smile. But the Bible says that God desires truth in the inward parts. And he says the inward parts because he's the only one that can see it. 
He desires truth only where he can see. Another thing that that God was speaking to me about this week was was the fact that we hide because we we struggle to imagine a God who will love us even despite of our shortcomings. Because it's, it's difficult to, to have someone on earth that does that, we don't think it exists. We don't think that God could love us even if we know, even if he knows that our heart is bitter. Even if he knows that you just slept with someone. Even if he knows that, you know, you're, you're, you're thinking about suicide or you just committed an abortion. We struggle to think that he would love us even if he knew those things. Especially if you come from, I did, I came from a messed up family. Can I be real? I, my family was messed up. So in my head... My dad wasn't there. He would call me when he wanted. And he would speak to me when he wanted. So God must be like that. Especially with fathers. Usually when a, when a relationship with a father is messed up. It usually messes up the relationship we have with God. Because we think if my father can be like this and he's supposed to be a representative of God in my life, then it must mean God's like this. So even when we get saved, we take that that mentality into our relationship with God. Or if, even if you had a father, if your father was extremely, uh, extremely strict and extremely difficult. We struggle to see God as loving and caring and, and, and comforting. We don't see him that way. So we think, oh, if God knows this, he, he's going to be angry because that's the way my father would, would have reacted. And we equate these relationships with God. And it causes us to hide. It causes us to ignore the elephants in the room. Today, I want us to know that that God wants us to be naked before him. If you're hurt, please don't think just coming to church is going to make it better. Because it's not. There's only one healer, and that's God. Yes, once God is beginning to do a work in your heart, coming to church will help you see. And, and you, know, you know, hearing the word of God will help you. But that's not ultimately what it's about. If you're struggling with sin, open up your heart. And bear it all before God. And be naked before him. Be naked before him. He will not cast you away. All he desires is truth in the inward parts. If you feel like you don't know him anymore, then tell him, I don't know who you are. He will not cast you away. If you're struggling with believing him, don't think about quoting 10 scriptures. 
and say to yourself, yes, uh, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the head and not the tail. That's not going to do anything. Because all it will be is vain babblings. God desires truth in the inward parts, in the parts that no man can see. He wants to know your pains. He wants to know your hurts so that he can be the balm of Gilead and make it better. But if we don't give it to him, if we try and hide it, and if we try and be like Adam and Eve and put the fig leaves together and try and patch it up, If we try and patch it up with activities, oh, there's a concert there, I'm there. There's this minister coming, I'm there. And there's nothing wrong with going to these things. I go to these things, they're great. That's not the point I'm trying to make. But the point I'm trying to make is that if we use these things as a means of covering up what's really in our hearts, sooner rather than later, the leaves we use to patch things up will begin to crumble. They will begin to crumble. And at that point, we have to run to God anyway. God doesn't want us to hide. The only person, as far as my knowledge... As far as my knowledge goes, that God called the man after his own heart was David. The psalm that I read, Psalm 51, this was the psalm that David wrote after he had just, first of all, committed adultery. Well, it started off with the lust of the eye. So that's one sin, lust. Next sin, adultery. The third sin, murder. This is the best example of someone who is naked before God. Psalm 51. Let me just say something. Many of us think that guilt makes up for what we've done. So we try to feel guilty. Oh God, I feel jealous. Oh, you shouldn't be jealous. Oh, oh, you're so bad. You're so horrible. How can you be jealous? You're supposed to be a Christian. And after we felt all that, we think it's okay now because I felt guilty anyway. Guilt doesn't do anything. Guilt is just a human response to sin. Because David could have stopped at being guilty. He could have stopped at feeling guilty. I mean, God, I just, I just killed somebody. I just slept with another man's wife. Oh God, I'm supposed to be the man after your heart. I'm supposed to be the king of Israel. Oh God, I feel so bad. God, I'm horrible. God, I'm messed up. Blah, 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 blah. And on and on and on and on. And that's what many of us do. We state to God how bad we are for the things we feel, for the way we are. And then what we do next, we cover it up. We just feel guilty, then cover it up, and then we stop there. We end it there. David is our best example. He came naked before God. He stripped everything away. He stripped away the facade. If there's anybody that had something to cover up, it was David. If if there was anybody that had a right to cover something up, it was David. Because first of all, he was a king. He was a king. He was supposed to be the example for Israel. He was supposed to be the priest over Israel. He was supposed to be the example over Israel. But he came naked before God. 
And he says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness. David knew how to pull on God. He knew the dimension of God to call. And that was the loving dimension. That fills my soul with so much gladness. That even when I'm messed up, even when I've sinned, even when my heart is messed up, I can go to God and say, because you love. Because you love, I can still stand boldly before you, even in my sin, and I can cry out to you. And because you love, you will forgive me. And he says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. This fills my soul with so much joy. Knowing that if David could go before God and be naked like this, although his sins were so much, although the odds were stacked against him, although the odds were stacked against him, he still went to God and begged for mercy. He still went to God and, 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 and ripped his heart open. And laid it down at the feet of God. And say, God, this is who I am. I am a liar. I am a murderer. I am an adulterer. But have mercy upon me. Many of us cannot do that. Many of us will not do that. Many of us will not do that. We will say, let me go to that prayer meeting. Let me read more of my Bible. Then maybe I'll be better. Let me do all these things and maybe I'll be better. But we forget that he desires truth in the inward parts. He desires to take us just as we are. Even in our messed up state. Even when we are dealing with so much. Even when, even when, we, are sh- when we are unsure of whether we are saved or not. Even when our heart is jealous. Even when our faith is down. Even when we cannot believe him anymore. My husband is the most honest person that I know. He'll come to me and be like, do you know what, baby? I don't believe, I don't believe God right now. Right now, I don't feel like I believe God. But then he usually says something after. He usually says, but it is well. And it's taught me so much. Coming from a person who I didn't like being vulnerable before anybody. I didn't like feeling weak. I didn't even want to give anybody the chance to reject me. So therefore I will hide everything. If I don't give you the chance to reject me, then you cannot reject me. Therefore I'm safe. But it's taught me the importance of being naked before God. The importance of stopping trying to patch things up. Trying to to use the fig, fig leaves like Adam and Eve to make things look better on the outside. But inside... Inside in the hearts, in the depths of your heart where God can see, it's messed up. And the problem is not that it's messed up because if there wasn't messed up people, Jesus didn't need to come. If everybody was righteous and if everybody was saved, then why did Jesus come? He could have stayed in glory. 
He could have stayed where, where the angels bowed before him and they cried holy 24-7. He could have stayed where it was comfortable, but he came for sinners and those who are desperate in need of him. Those who have a reason to need him. He came for the liars. He came for the messed up people. He came for the homosexuals. Yes, believe it or not, he came for them. He came for the pedophiles. He came for the addicts. He came for those who are in need of him. And we spit in the face of God every time we try to patch things up ourselves. We claim to be righteous every time we try to patch things up ourselves. And this morning, God is calling us to nakedness. God is calling us to deal with the elephants in the room. Stop trying to pray more. Stop trying to read your Bible more. Yes, I said it. It sounds like the, the worst thing to say on the pulpit, but it's true. Stop using the fig leaves to try and cover things up more and get before your face and cry out to God for mercy and say, God, this is who I am. This is who I am. I cannot hide it anymore. I don't want to hide it anymore because if I keep hiding it, I will die this way. We try in our own efforts. Yes, being naked is not fun. It causes you to it causes you to be vulnerable. It causes you to uh, to admit the truth to yourself. But sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves. Many of us lie for so long that we believe the lie. We start to believe the lie that oh, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't need help. I prayed for three hours yesterday, so that means I must be fine. That means I'm, I, I, I'm not jealous anymore. I, 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 I haven't slept with him for two weeks, so that means I'm okay. But it's not about that. The Bible says he desires truth in the inward parts. Truth in the inward parts. What we cannot admit cannot be changed. If someone who is dealing dealing with drug addiction does not admit that they're dealing with drug, drug addiction, they cannot get any help. Because where do you know to send them to? If someone who is dealing with so much pain cannot admit that, God, my heart hurts, then how is the healer going to heal them? If someone who's feeling so far away from God cannot admit that, God, I feel so distant from you, I don't even know you anymore. If we cannot admit that, then how is it supposed to come near to you? If someone who's feeling so weak cannot admit it, cannot be honest about it, but instead wants to quote, I am strong, I'm not weak, I am strong, I'm not weak. There's nothing wrong with quoting these things. But if we haven't been naked before God first, quoting these things is irrelevant. It will mean nothing. It will mean nothing. He desires truth in the inward parts. He desires nakedness because that's the way he created it. He created man naked. And he did it for a reason. He created man naked for a reason. 
so that he will be, this is so beautiful, so that he will be the one to clothe us. We don't need fig leaves. We don't need fig leaves. We don't need to patch things up ourselves. We don't need to try and cover our own nakedness because he is our glory. He is our glory. When we are naked, he can clothe us. When we are weak, he can be our strength. When we are lost, he can show us the way back home. When we have nothing else to give, he can give us what to give. When our heart is so messed up, And when our heart is so jealous and so bitter and so angry, he can take that and turn it around. Believe in the power of God to cause a change. God is not your father. He's not your mother. He's not the person that lets you down. He's not the person that mocks you. He is God and he is all loving and all gracious and his mercies are new every single day. If we just come to him naked. If we just remove the fig leaves uh, that we've used to patch things up. If we just stop deceiving ourselves. And if we just come to him just as we are. Like I said before. If everybody on earth was righteous, if everybody on earth was perfect, then why did Jesus come? Then why would he step down from glory? And why would he deny himself and put himself to the lowly state of being a man? Why would he do all that if there wasn't a desperate need for him? He desires truth in the inward parts. Let's stop sweeping everything else. Let's stop dealing with the ants and chasing the little ants in the room. And deal with the elephant in the room. And deal with the thing that's staring us in the face. And stop patching things up. Stop trying to make things look better. So try to make yourself feel better. Because best believe it will not work. You keep going round and round and round and round and round and round and round the same cycle. Can we just stand up this afternoon we don't have to shout if you want to shout please shout but I know that I know that I know that there are many people in this room that have tried to cover things up in their own strength like Adam and Eve I've tried to use the fig leaves to cover their own nakedness. Where God is saying, give it to me. Where God is saying, bring it to me, bring it to me. I have the power. I have the love. I have the mercy that you need. Bring it to me, bring it to me. You don't need to do it by yourself. 
I don't despise you. Because you're dealing with anything. It only confirms the reason why I died. It only confirms the reason why I died. Father God, even for myself, I lay naked before you, God. I'm not trying to patch anything up together. I'm not trying to make myself look better. I'm not trying to hide my nakedness anymore, God. I stand vulnerable before you. I stand weak before you. I don't want to patch things up anymore. I don't want to just go to church and not understand. I don't want to just go to prayer meetings. Upon prayer meetings. Upon prayer meetings. Then I get home and my sin is still facing me in my closet. And what I'm dealing with is still staring at me right in the face. And I feel like I cannot get away from it. I don't want to do that anymore, God. I don't want to do that anymore. God wants us to be naked before him. Your love is so strong. Your love is so furious. Oh, the love, the love, the love of God. It doesn't reject. It doesn't turn away. But it embraces even in the wrong. Even when we are messed up, the love of God embraces us. And it pulls us in. And it heals every broken heart. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. God, we don't want to patch it up anymore. We want to stand naked, vulnerable. Strip us away, God. Strip away everything, God. Strip away everything, God. I'm in two minds about doing this, but I feel God leading me to do it. And it's not for everyone, so don't feel forced to do so. If you feel like, do you know what, God, I've been, I've been trying to, to, trying to hide the elephant in my life. I've been trying to, to patch things up with my own fig leaves. I've been hiding the truth. I've not been naked before you, God. I want you to come to the altar and pray. And this is why. I want it to be a public declaration that you're stopping, you're, 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 you're stopping trying to hide. You're stopping the need to patch things up by yourself. Like I said, if you don't feel the need to come out, please don't come out. But if you do, I want you to come to the front and not wait for anybody to pray for you. But pray for yourself and say to God, God, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to hide the elephant in my room anymore. I want to stand naked before you. Best believe me today, the love of God is so furious. It justifies you. It justifies you. It justifies you. It justifies you. 
You don't need to hide. You don't need to hide. You don't need to hide. He created you naked. You don't need to hide. You were made to be naked before him. You were created to be naked before him. Sometimes when you're you're in a place like this, you don't have the words to say. But you can just say, Jesus, I need you. Oh, Jesus, we come naked before you, God. Oh, Jesus, we stand naked before you. We don't want to patch things up anymore. We don't want to make ourselves seem better. We don't want to use fig leaves to try and cover up our sin. Pastor Paul, can you help me sing? My heart sings, oh. Oh, Jesus. We are naked, God. Because we realize our need for you. We realize our need for a savior. We realize our need of a God who is perfect. Jesus, we come before you naked, vulnerable, not trying to hide anymore, not trying to make ourselves look better, not trying to cover up. We don't want to hide anymore, God. We don't want to hide. We don't want to hide. Jesus, we don't want to hide. But the God, we want to be honest with you. We want to come with truth. We want to say, yes, God, I'm struggling. Yes, God, my heart is so bitter. Yes, God, I'm so angry. We don't want to hide, Jesus. We don't want to hide anymore because you can see all. Even when we lay our bed in hell, you are there. Jesus. Oh God, fig tree, fig leaves are man-made. You created us to be naked. You created us to be stripped away, God. You created us to be all before you. We don't want to hide, God. Jesus, break that 
down the walls. Break down the walls that we put up to hide. Break down the walls, God. Break down the walls, Jesus. Break down the walls, God. Break down the walls, God. We don't want to hide. We want to stand boldly in your presence. We want to be like David. And I will follow you. when we try to hide we forget that this life is temporal you will not live forever news flash you will die one day and you will have to stand before the savior and then you cannot hide anymore when you stand before God when that trumpet blows you will be naked whether you like it or not everything uh, that's in your heart uh, at that point uh, will be on the full screen and everyone will be able to see it. We may try and cover up on this earth but there will come a time where we cannot any longer. Where on judgment day we will stand before the Father. We will stand before him and all our works will be put through the fire. And the condition of our hearts will need to be seen. So just in case, there may still be a few people here thinking, no, I'm fine, God. I'm okay. That's okay. Okay. You can feel like that, but remember, nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. You could walk out of this place and that could be the end of your life. And then you will be naked before God. And then you will have to say something before God. So just in case, uh, there are a few people here who are still thinking they're okay. That's fine. But God gives us opportunities so we can seize them. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed to any man. God, search our hearts. Search our hearts. Sometimes uh, we have elephants that we don't know we have because we've hit them for too long. uh, So in our head they've disappeared.
Yes, Lord. Yes. Jesus. I want my life to be a pleasing sacrifice in your eyes. Give me the fear of the Lord. I feel the need to remind some people here. His love is so strong for you. His love is so furious for you. It's furious and it's fighting for that place in your heart. And it's saying, daughter, son, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. If only you knew how much he loved. His love for you drove him to the cross. Sometimes we think that, oh, God died for everybody. No, he died for you. For you, for your sins. He died for your sins. He loved you. Amanda, God loves you. Tossing, God loves you. He died for you. Mariam, God loves you. He died for you. Thank you. Thank you, God, that we don't have to hide from you. That we can come just as we are. We can come just as we are. Thank you, God, we can come just as we are. I can come just as I am. Thank you for your word to us today. We thank you, God, that we don't have to hide. We thank you, God, that we can be naked before you. We can bear all before you. We can be stripped away before you. And you still love us the same. Thank you, God, because you see the depths of our hearts and you love us the same. Thank you, God. Give us the grace to be naked before you. Give us the grace not to patch things up. Not to to try and look better with church activities 
and by, by doing things that seem godly. But Father God, we pray for a heart that's naked before you. That's naked before you. That's naked before you. This message has been brought to you freely by Ecclesia Kingdom Movement. To support our ministry and partner with us to increase our impact across the world, reach more people and take advantage of more platforms, we encourage you to consider making a monthly gift of any amount or one-time gift towards the work of the gospel. We'd like to thank you in advance for your support and we value your partnership.